There is one catastrophic scenario that can happen in astrophotography, and that is the scenario where your equipment basically slews in a way that it comes into contact with the tripod and smashes your camera, your focuser, your guide scope, something into the tripod and just completely breaks it. And you can lose thousands of dollars, literally, in the blink of an eye when that kind of stuff happens. And I've done a video in the past about how you can mitigate that risk, but how you cannot cancel that risk. And it so happens that there's actually a firmware update for the mount that I have here, which I've reviewed on the channel before. This is the Warp Astron WD-20, and it has a firmware upgrade to completely mitigate that risk using two new methods. And I really hope that other manufacturers can follow suit because that can really be helpful in saving our equipment. So a quick explanation about what can go wrong. I already have a video about it. I'll put the link up above and down in the description if you want all of the details. But basically, uh, the main risk or one of the main risks would be uh, when you are slewing to a target. Let's say you're using Nina or the ASI Air to slew to a target. And you know, after you've slewed to the target, there is the centering step. So for instance, let's say I tell this little telescope here to point I don't know, in this season, that would be Deneb in the early evening, would be roughly in, in this direction here. Deneb is there. And so I point, the telescope just moves, and it will be pointed in the general direction of Deneb. Maybe it will have a little bit of error in the pointing, and that's where we go to the second step, which is centering. So we take a picture of where the telescope is pointed. We have a process called plate solving on the PC or in the SI Air that looks at the stars in this uh, picture and matches those stars with its own internal catalog of stars. And then it can determine exactly, really, where the telescope is pointed. So now we have the telescope pointed roughly towards Deneb, and then we have also the information about exactly where it is pointed. So the PC, or the SI Air, can actually send a command to the mount. And it's an actual uh, command called the sync command to tell the mount, like, hey, actually, you're not pointing directly at Deneb. You have a slight error. You're like, you know, I don't know what, two degrees to the left of Deneb, whatever. Right? So that's what the plate solving does. It tells the mount where it really is updated. So the mount takes that in and updates its pointing model. Then we can send a second slew command to the neb, and because now the, the mount just has like one or two degrees to move, it will be much more precise and it will probably center the neb. We can do another round of plate solving just to be sure, and maybe there's going to be some more centering, but that's overall how it works. So, how do, what does this have to do with anything about mount collisions, you would uh, wonder? Well, simply because we can have a situation where the plate solving simply does not work and gives an incorrect result. So again, let's say I point it to Deneb, and the plate solving runs for the centering process, and it tells the mount like it makes a mistake. It misunderstands the star field that it's looking at. Maybe you know, a noise pattern on the sensor looked like stars, and it misidentified it as something else. And it says, oh, actually, you know what? You're pointed this direction. You're pointed there, right? So it tells the mount, no, 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 no. you're not pointed at Deneb, you're pointing this direction there, to the northeast. And it sends the sync command to the mount. And the mount usually is kind of dumb and will accept that as is, as the, the gospel truth. And therefore, it updates where it thinks it's pointing. So the mount thinks it's pointing this direction, but physically, it's actually pointing that direction. So we have a mismatch between where the mount thinks it is pointing and where it actually is pointing which means that now the limits that we have, because we have limits in place telling the mount like, hey, don't point below the horizon more than five degrees below the horizon. Hey, don't go past more than five degrees past the meridian, do a flip first. That kind of limit, it no longer works because the mount is completely mistaken about its physical configuration. It no longer knows its real physical configuration and therefore it can make mistakes. So how can you avoid that? And this is what comes very interesting in the firmware update that went for the uh, Warp Astron WD-20. It is a firmware update version 20.22, and I'll have a link down in the description to the update instructions. If you have an old version of the mount, like I did, you would need actually a new motherboard uh, to change basically the uh, motherboard of the mount itself 
And uh, I had to do that. It was a bit of a painful process, so I hope you don't have to. But if you do have one of the more recent samples, you wouldn't have any problems. You can update uh, the firmware as is. And once the firmware is updated, you can use a new tool from Warp Astron, which lets you set uh, a lot of things. It can set the uh, speed of the mount to up to 10 degrees per second, which is completely insane. Don't do it. Stick to 5 degrees per, se per second, but it can slew extremely quickly if you need to. But it also adds encoder-based RA axis tracking of the mount, and it also adds AEB automated emergency braking. So how this work is the mount actually has a home position sensor. So at any point, I can tell the mount to uh, go to the home position. And here you can see it's just nicely going back to the home position. And it doesn't do it based on where it thinks it is pointed. There's actually physical sensors within the mount to tell it exactly where the home position is, where it will be pointing straight towards the North Celestial Pole. And here we are at home position. And then after that, the mount, because it uses a drive technology that is, that is basically direct drive, it has to use encoders to keep track of where it is. Encoders, they're basically little uh, wheels within the uh, mount that keep track of how many degrees it has moved in either direction. And encoders, they're physical. They cannot be uh, deceived by an incorrect centering and plate solving and synchronization command to the mount. So I've actually set up my limits so that if the mount goes more than 95 degrees in either direction from the home position measured per encoders, it will stop. So let me, let me show you. I will just slew towards uh, the uh, east direction of the, uh, of the mount using the hand controller. And I'll just keep holding the button. I keep holding the button. I keep holding it. And we can see that around here, it stops moving. This is because the, de the encoders within the mount have detected that the mount has moved 95 degrees from the home position in the RA axis, so it refuses to move. And we'll do the same thing in the opposite direction. So with that, with just that, we can avoid a lot of issues in terms of collisions because we can keep track physically of how many degrees away from the home position the mount is pointing. So that's like super useful tool number one that has been added by this firmware update. Now let me show you quickly the number two feature that has been added for safety, which is the automated emergency braking. And this one can be parameterized so it doesn't have incorrect activations. There is a whole process for that. And I'll show you in the uh, new tool that is available to control the mount how to set all that up. To show you, I will now basically use the hand controller to press the west slew button. So it, the telescope will move towards me, will rotate towards me. And I will keep this button pressed the whole time, but I will hinder the movement of the telescope with my hand. And you'll see what's going to happen. So moving it to the west, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving, it's full, full speed, and I hinder it. And I'm still pressing the button, but you can see that it stopped and it backtracked. And I actually it backtracked exactly five degrees. Let's try again. So moving to the west, to the west, to the west, to the west, and I resist it, it stopped, and it backtracks. And the whole time, I'm pressing the west slew button. I, I'm telling it, keep moving, but it stops, it refuses. And that is the automated emergency braking system. It basically measures the load on the motors to determine whether, like, okay, we're exceeding a torque limit, effectively, to tell the mount, like, hey, stop that, stop slewing, stop moving like that, because we've clearly hit an obstacle, the mount stops and backtracks five degrees and then waits there for the next command. So let me quickly bring back the mount to home position to show you how it looks like after you've done the firmware upgrade to configure that and to set that up. Okay, so I have opened up a new tool that is available on the Warp Astron website. I'll put again the link down in the description, which is the Warp Astron mount tool version 1.0. And uh, the first thing you want to do is connect to the mount so you can select the COM port that the mount is connected to. I'm, I'm connected to the mount via USB here. And uh, leave the baud rate to 9600 and click on connect. We're now connected to the mount. And once that's done, you can go to the uh, status tab here and click on read all to see all of the information that we have from the mount. And it tells us that the mount is at home. So now we can go 
to the safety and limits. That's where the magic happens. We have our actual uh, limits in terms of overhead limit and horizon limit, uh, which is the usual stuff. And then we have Meridian East, Meridian West, and that kind of stuff. So that's the normal limits that rely, those two at the top, they rely on the mount knowing where it is pointing. So it relies on not having an incorrect sync operation that was done by a centering process. But the two below are the one that I introduced. This one here, the ECHA limit. So EC is for encoder and HA is actually like our angle. So it's basically the right ascension axis. Tells us that we cannot allow the mount to go more than in the right ascension to go more than 95 degrees from where it started. So that is this 95 degrees east. So in my direction, it will go 95 degrees. And if it finds it there, it stops exactly like I showed you earlier. And then we can also set it for the west. And I put the same value. I allow the mount to move 95 degrees in right ascension from the home position, but not more. Okay, so that's for the uh, HA limit. So to set it, you just put in the number, make sure you have enabled, and then you write this. That way it's written to mount, you can read it again just to make sure, and that's done. Then the next one is the uh, automatic emergency braking system. And uh, it's already enabled for me. I ha have actually intentionally very low values there so I could show you how it looks like with me just like putting my hand there and stopping the, the mount. And you can also, from the home position, click on auto tuning here. So the first time that you do this, you actually need to click on enable, then you need to turn off the mount, turn it back on, reconnect from this tool. Again, from the status menu, you read all, then the safety limits, you read here and just make sure that it is enabled. And once that's done, you can go to the auto tuning and from the home position, it should be at home position. And this EAB should be enabled. You can just click on start. I will say, okay. And what this does is that the mount will just move 90 degrees or will move actually until the uh, HA limit position. So uh, make sure you don't have set that up to like 180. Uh, make, it, make sure you have set it up to a value that makes sense for your equipment. So for me, it's going to go five degrees below like the, uh, not the horizon, but you know, below the horizontal. There it goes. And it just goes back and it measures the load on the motors while it's doing that. And now you can see it tells me AEB tuning is completed. I'm going to click on OK. Now we can close this and we can click the read value here and you can see it has changed the aggressiveness and the threshold base here automatically based on the load that has measured and the moment arm basically that has measured on the uh, motors. So that's it. Now that it's actually set up like that, you need to restart the mount again. So let me show you, I would uh, disconnect the mount. I would turn it off, turn it back on. By the way, the clicks that you hear when you turn on the mount or when you connect it via USB is just the uh, brakes within the mount initializing. But uh, anyway, now we, are, um, we have turned on the mount again. I can connect to it again. I can go to my main status tab and read all, and I can double check that safety limit. I'll go, I'm going to read all and everything is enabled. So now everything is active. And so I have two layers of protection or even maybe three layers of protection against uh, strikes of the equipment onto the tripod or the pier. There's the meridian limits and there's the horizon limits, which both are relying on the mount knowing where it is actually pointing and not being wrong about that. And then we have the secondary ones, which are the uh, HA limit, our angle limit for the right ascension axis that relies on encoders within the mount. So it cannot be fooled by an incorrect sync measure. And we also have the automated emergency brake, which if everything else fails, it should be able to stop the mount after it has started hitting an object and backtrack it for five degrees, stop there and just wait for you. And I'm really glad to see that the mount that I got, something like what, a year ago, seven months, eight months ago, I don't remember, is getting 
better without uh, me needing to do anything. So that's pretty cool and I'm really happy with the progress that we're seeing. So if you have this mount, double check whether you can upgrade the firmware. If you have trouble upgrading the firmware, I believe there is a Discord channel or you can just contact their support uh, person and they can help you basically upgrade that firmware. They might send you a new motherboard. Changing that motherboard um, it's a bit difficult. Uh, you will need a variety of tweezers uh, of var various shapes and strengths. It was a bit uh, stressful for me to do, but it was doable by just me on my balcony. So it is possible, but uh, yeah, hopefully you won't have to do that. Let me know down in the comments what you uh, think of that. Leave a like on the video if it was useful. Tell me like, how do you like the mount if you have it? Or would you be considering this mount in the future? And of course, if you want to support me and you're planning on buying anything from Agena, High Point Scientific, Amazon, etc., if you do so after using my links that I have down in the description, it will help me out at no cost to you. If you want to help me directly and become a sponsor of this channel, you can become a channel member. It's the join button next to the subscribe button. Or you can become a Patreon supporter. And I have the link to my Patreon down in the description. Some of my Patreon ranks get access to my videos early and without ads. And all of you guys make this channel possible. These videos would not happen without you. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.